we can start. We have plenty of stuff to see today. So I'm very happy to present you uh, today, deploying Magento on uh, MDS. So the nice car, the safe Arbor statement, you may know it already. And let's start with some presentation. Who am I first? So my name is uh, Frédéric Descamps. I'm uh, Lefred uh, on Twitter. So if you want to follow new myself, stuff just uh, follow me and you can also ask me any, anything there i'm mysql evangelist i'm working uh, for the in the mysql community uh, team i am managing mysql since a long time so my first version i ever installed was 3.20 i'm a devops believer so if you have also devops question you can reach to me uh, after the webinar. I'm living in Belgium and I have a blog where you can find a lot of information related to my scale, which is lefret.be. So, and as you can see, this is me uh, at a conference a long time ago now. Something very important about me, I am not a Magento developer. So uh, if, it's, if you have some question really related to Magento itself, I might not be able to answer you. Uh, so this is uh, this is important uh, to know, right? So what's Magento? It's uh, an open source e-commerce, right? So it's uh, written uh, in PHP. Uh, it uses multiple other PHP firmer, uh, framework, such as uh, Laminas and Symfony. The source code of Magento is uh, distributed under uh, open software license uh, version three, and you can have the source. Uh, available on GitHub, right? So in GitHub Magento, Magento 2. And something very important, Magento supports MySQL Edo since version 2.4.0, which is from July 2020. So uh, not yet a year completely, but almost. So there is something very interesting in the Magento website. They said that uh, there is a warning about Magento is not supporting GTIDs, right? And uh, I highlight it here uh, on the slides, so you can see that when the Magento create uh, these uh, temporary tables, you might have uh, issues uh, with uh, GTID replication. Of course, uh, my MDS, my Skeletal Database Service, uses GTID; they are enabled, and uh, this is not problematic for us because, as you may know already, my uh, MDS use always the latest version of MySQL uh, Enterprise that uh, it's out. So currently in MDS, we are in 824. And as you can see on the slide, this problem of create temporary tables when using GTID, it's uh, not anymore a problem since 8013. So no, pro no problem for us. Magento should uh, uh, update their page here. So let's have a look now. What are the requirements for you to use MySQL database service on a, on a CI? The first requirement is you, uh, you need to have an internet connection. This seems uh, stupid, but this is uh, really what you need. You need an internet connection. You need to have an OCI account. You need, if you don't have an OCI account, you can have a free trial using uh, oracle.com slash MySQL, and you will see you can uh, click try uh, OCI and nothing else. This is all you need. So internet connection, OCI account. And when you run, uh, the OCI, um, you connect to OCI, so cloud or oracle.com, you will see the dashboard that looks like uh, similar to this. Um, like in the disclaimer uh, and in the, um, uh, the thing is that OCI moves also. So sometimes this can change the layout. It's always uh, almost like this, but for example, I had to change some slides uh, between when I wrote them and now because some uh, windows have changed really, really recently. Also, the feedback we receive from uh, um, people using OCI is hmm, this is quite complicated uh, sometimes to, uh, to use it. I don't think so. And I want to show you that it's very, very easy. It's possible to make it that easy than just to click almost. So if you want to use um, Magento OCI with uh, MDS, this is what you need. The first easier stuff to do 
it's to download a Terraform stack. So on my GitHub here, you can have um, a Terraform stack. The latest version from yesterday, because I made some change, uh, I, I update these, uh, these stack very often. And uh, it's uh, just, it's 161 now. So you can download it, but it's even more uh, easier than that. So if you want to download it, you can download the zip file and make modification if you, if you want to. But it is even more easy when you go on, the, on GitHub here, you will have this button here, deploy to Oracle on OCI. So I want to show you that uh, live. So here, my repository, so on, on GitHub, right? And uh, if you go on, you can see there are multiple ones I've created. And the OCI Magento, here you have the button, deploy to Oracle Cloud, right? Directly, when you do this, you will uh, directly um, open um, Oracle Cloud and you will end up here. Uh, so if you don't click on the button directly, you won't see this. This is for you to do it if you want to do it manually. So if you have downloaded the zip file, you do developers this stack in the resource manager. And if you click directly on the GitHub, you will have this window uh, uh, appearing directly. So as you can see, it's empty. And as soon as you say, oh, I accept the Oracle term of use, it will fill up uh, everything for you. And you will end up with something uh, like this, right? So uh, there is a name. So in this case, I didn't change it. So it's the zip file and, uh, and the name. And uh, you will see here, nothing to do. You have nothing to change. Just click next or create a description if you have multiple stack you want to, to uh, manage, right? On the next screen, so on the formula, as you can see uh, here on the left, you have three steps. So stack information, configure uh, variables, and then review. So on the configure variables uh, um, step, you have to enter some uh, information. Some are already pre-entered for you, but some you really need to do them. So for example, it will deploy a, a MySQL database service instance, and you will need to uh, give a password. So you need to enter a password yourself. Then there is a name. So by default in MySQL instance, but you can change that. Then you need a compute instance to have a Magento. So here again, uh, it, there is a name already written for you. It's Magento server and the user, uh, MySQL user that we're gonna create in MDS for you, automatically, you need to type the name and the password uh, and the, the schema you want and so on. And you will see, uh, you have also a Magento admin user to create with the first name, the mail and all that kind of stuff. You need to enter all these uh, variables, right? And then you have, uh, again, uh, below on the screen, you have web servers. So you can deploy multiple Magento if you want. So you can say, oh, I want to deploy multiple uh, web servers. And you say how many you want. And then you need to choose also the, um, uh, the shape uh, for them, the shape for the compute instances, and the shape for the uh, MySQL database service instance. If you are already a OCI user, you have maybe already created a VCN. You may already have your private subnet where the MDS uh, will, uh, will stay and also uh, public subnets. So if, if you have already all that, you can say, oh, I want to use existing infrastructure. If you have not that, then you keep it like that. Right. So as I said, when you deploy multiple uh, uh, web server, you can always you also here uh, see that uh, you click multiple uh, deploy multiple web server, the amount of multiple server, and then what are they for all these multiple server? So do you want them all to connect on the same database instance? So to to load balance the workload, for example, or you want every web server being a different Magento uh, site. So all that it's it's possible uh, to do. So here, this is one of the architecture, right? So you have MDS, you have open distro for Elasticsearch, this is needed for Magento. 
that is also in the private subnet. And you have Magento on the public subnet. So this uh, Magento instance will be available to be reached from, uh, from outside, right? And you can see VCNs. So all that it's created uh, from the form we just uh, um, uh, filled just before. But you can also say, oh, I want multiple Magento sharing the same instance, or I want to have multiple Magento having their own open distro for electric search instance and uh, their MySQL database service instance. So all this, it's possible from what we do. And like I said, you can also say, I want to use uh, an existing um, um, architecture, and then you need to enter all the OCID of what you want, of the resources you want to use. So this is for more advanced OCI users. If you don't know, you don't, you don't feel it and you let it go. And then you say, I want to plan uh, my, all this is, is Terraform uh, recipes, in fact. And uh, you can say, I want to plan it. So it will see if everything is okay. And when it's succeeded, you can now apply it. With the re completely recent uh, uh, modification that uh, happened to uh, OCI last week, it's also possible when you do the stack, when you import it from GitHub, you can also directly say, oh, I want to apply it. I, I will show, show you uh, in the next screen how, how it looks like. So when it's applying, you will see that there is a job now, an apply job that is in progress. So on the new resource manager now, when we create everything in the review, at the end, you have, oh, I want to run the apply directly. So you can, so if you're, if you already tested uh, all your stacks, you can uh, apply them directly. So this is quite very uh, uh, fast and easy. So when you say run and apply and you say create, then the magic in uh, OCI will happen and the MySQL database service instance will be uh, provisioned for you. Then all the compute instance that we decide to have will also be uh, deployed. And after that, all the, the, the installation of the software, the user creation, uh, all that will be created. If you, you need VCNs, if you need uh, internet gateways, all that will be created for you automatically. So you don't have anything to deal with. And this is sometimes the complicated part if you are not a sysadmin or if you don't have a sysadmin background, it's to find your way between what's a security list, what's a, a private subnet, a public subnet, what is a NAT gateway, what is an internet gateway. You don't need to have to think about that. You just have to say, oh, please deploy what I need to do my job, which is run a Magento um, e-commerce uh, site, for example. So when it's done, you have a lock where you can see everything coming out. And uh, at the end of this um, lock, you have some information like uh, uh, review, uh, like the, the admin you decided. So here you can see that the Magento admin login, it's admin. Then you have the Magento public IP. So the one that you will be able to reach from outside. Uh, the name of the MDS instance, the IP of the MDS instance that is in the private subnet, you also uh, see that. And um, uh, also the IP of uh, the open distro uh, that you need to have. If you go on the, on the um, resource manager, you have also an output uh, button here. So when you click on it, you will see all this um, output information from the stack that you can copy paste and use, right? So in this case, you see that uh, there is a Magento public IP that we're gonna use, but we also know everything we need to know uh, to use it and uh, like the passwords and, uh, and the logins. So what happened uh, in the background, like I said, it uh, created uh, some uh, compute instances. So in this case, Open Distro and Magento Server, as you can see, they are both running. Uh, Open Distro doesn't need to have any uh, public IP because it's in the private subnet. Magento Server has a public IP, so to be able to connect from outside. And the database system is also created uh, there. Right? So everything has been created. So now, what do we need to do? Just use Magento. So we use the IP we, uh, we got, we had it in our web browser, the public IP we received from uh, the output of the stack. 
and we are in Magento. In the lock, we were able to find also the admin, uh, uh, Magento admin URI, right? So we're gonna use it. And when you use it, we have here uh, the um, uh, Magento login where we can log in and now we can do uh, whatever we need with, uh, uh, with Magento. And this is for the people familiar with Magento, the dashboard of Magento, right? So this is quite uh, easy so far, but now let's say, oh, for any reason, you also need to connect uh, in terminal to that uh, Magento uh, instance. How can you do that? It's very easy. We will need to use SSH, right? So as you can see in the output, if you remember when we create the stack, it printed uh, several uh, output information. One of the output, it's an instance SSH, SSH key that it creates uh, for us. So we just need to copy it and paste it in a file in our machine somewhere. And we will call it, for example, OCI key, right? Then we change the... Um, uh, permission so that only our, our user can uh, read it and use it and we connect using ssh you we you, we use the, that key to uh, authenticate we use the opc user at and the public ip so now we are already on the magento uh, server right and if you remember on the on the first slide of the dashboard the cron job were not, were not installed, right? So we need to install them. So how we do that? Again, here, when we are on the machine, we can install them very easily using uh, the, the bin Magento. So um, this is how we do that. So we go on the var uh, www.html, which is the, um, the default path for uh, websites uh, on the Oracle Linux. There, we use the Apache user and we do cron install and everything has been uh, created. And for example, if you forgot the admin uh, URI, you can get it back from here too, right? So, so far, nothing complicated. You saw in one click, filling so one form and we were able to deploy Magento. So now that we have that data, what we can do? So we will, uh, for example, add some data. Uh, if it, we're gonna use the, the sample uh, data from Magento 2. So we're gonna install some packages in the Magento server. And here are we gonna use the, sample, the Magento 2 sample data. Like I said earlier, I'm not a, a Magento uh, developer. So I needed some data to, to see uh, how it looks like. So, uh, and to be able to, to run uh, Magento. So this is what I do. I will just load some uh, sample data inside uh, directly uh, from uh, Magento. So this is how we do that. We need to increase the memory of the PHP process because we were using only the default, which is, uh, uh, 128 megabyte, and we increase that to a uh, half gig. So this is how we do that. We reload HTTP. And uh, finally, we can also finish the, this uh, simple data uh, installation by running uh, this uh, Magento setup upgrade and flush. So we go back in Magento, we refresh the, the page, and what we see is this. So we are now in Magento. We have the sample website loaded and everything it's cool, everything it's working. And as you can see, it was very, very easy to deploy uh, on MDS. Nothing to know, it, all the, the difficult terms were hidden and taking, uh, taken in consideration by uh, MDS uh, and the stack. So now that we have, you know, and. And if you don't, I, I will um, uh, show you that in MTS, we have something special that nobody else uh, has. It's EatWave. So what's EatWave? So EatWave uh, with allow us to speed up everything. And uh, when I, I worked on, uh, on MySQL performance, a lot of, uh, of my... Uh, 
I would say, customer or the people had to, to deal with were Magento shops, right? Where they had a lot of issue with uh, query performance and performance. And so I wanted to show how oh, will uh, Heatwave help us uh, in this case? And Heatwave does that. So Heatwave can speed up all your MySQL queries uh, that are uh, really slow. You can go like uh, 400 times uh, faster. So this is uh, something very cool that I really, really um, engage you to, to, to try and, and test that. So how can we use Heatwave? So the first thing to do, we need to have uh, to add uh, Heatwave uh, to our instance. Right, and how we do that? We do that uh, by uh, here. So when we have MySQL instance, you can see that there is uh, Heatwave, and it's disabled. You need to enable it. Watch out! There is something very important to do that. Your instance, your MySQL uh, instance, so your MDS instance uh, shape must be compatible with Heatwave, and. I would recommend to always use one of the uh, Heatwave uh, shape because you have very, even if you don't enable Heatwave directly, you already have something very powerful uh, uh, with it. So this is all you, the shape you need to have. It's mysql.heatwave. So it's not because you have the um, Heatwave shape that you need to use Heatwave directly. You can enable it later or never enable it. Uh, it's possible without uh, any problem. So we have now uh, a Heatwave instance that we're gonna we're gonna use, right? And when we enable it, we will see here that uh, the uh, Heatwave it's um, created and enabled. So it's enabled and it's creating. So it's creating all the machines uh, that. Uh, uh, you won't see, but all the heat wave nodes in the cluster and here by default, we have two, right? So we can see that here in the cluster information that it's still creating and we have the two nodes of the cluster running, right? So when it's done, you will see that everything is active. So heat wave, it's ready to be used also uh, uh, for us. So we can verify that in MySQL itself. So we connect from the, if you have a, a VPN, you can connect from your machine directly uh, to, to a CI. And uh, there is a multiple way to, to do that. And uh, if you don't know how to do it, please go on my blog. You will find multiple way to, uh, to have a VPN there and uh, complicated ones, easy ones, everything. And uh, now when you are connected to MySQL and the easiest way to connect to MySQL uh, MDS where we are right now, it's from the Magento server. It has uh, MySQL uh, there to write. So the client. So we can see now that if we do show global status like rapid plugin bootstrapped, if it's yes, it means that we have Heatwave uh, enabled and bootstrapped. We have also some uh, uh, status variables available that for normal MySQL instance, you don't see. And these are uh, the, the status one. And there is one particularly very important for us now is the uh, rapid query offload count. What does that mean? So it means that when we will, uh, Heatwave will uh, enter in action and we will benefit from Heatwave, this counter will increase. So we're gonna see that, uh, how to use that uh, later. We also have some new tables in a performance schema, which are uh, RPD underscore, and we have some information here uh, too in performance schema. Right. So when we have that, as the DBA, we need to decide which tables I'm gonna uh, use uh, in each wave, right? So as I don't know uh, much about uh, Magento, right? I decided that uh, all the catalogs table will be loaded in, uh, in Heatwave. So this is what you do for each of them. I am very lazy. I haven't done it exactly like this. I have done it like this the first time and then I, I made a small script to do it for me, right? Uh, to load because there are multiple table, but this is how, how it works. So you need to do, to add uh, 
to alter the table and tell you have a secondary engine and the secondary engine is rapid. And then you need to load the data to the secondary engine. So doing secondary load, the load is very fast also. Then you go around your uh, Magento website, you do what you do usually. And to see again, if uh, some um, queries benefit from Heatwave, you can see it here with rapid query offload count. And you can see here, we have three queries that have been offloaded to Heatwave. So this is cool. We have installed Heatwave and you can see that in Magento, uh, without just going uh, around Magento, we had data that uh, queries that benefit already and speed were uh, speed up by Heatwave. So now that this query are, uh, are um, uh, I would say, um, offloaded to Heatwave, it, it would be nice to see which one they are also, right? So we can see that in performance schema, we have uh, RPD query stats uh, table. And from it, you can see here, if you use query text, the query that has been uh, offloaded uh, to Heatwave. So we can try because I was also uh, testing this when I, I created the, the webinar and the slides. So we can see, oh, what's the difference with or without uh, Heatwave to compare it, right? And as a DBA, you can do that very easily also. So one of the query, so this one, you can see. So I run the query and the query uh, took 0 0.05 seconds, right? So, uh, and return 10. Then I do for this session, use secondary engine equal off. So don't offload anything to Heatwave. I run the query again. And as you can see, the query take 2.38, uh, 43 seconds. So with Heatwave, this query was much faster than uh, without, right? Now, so we see that we can benefit from Heatwave. But there is something that we need to be aware also is that for some operation like re-indexing everything, Magento will run some DDL and that are not uh, supported while Heatwave is active. So you cannot change uh, some uh, uh, metadata and how the, the table is while you have offloaded in Heatwave. So if you have, uh, if you encounter uh, such error when you try to do a DDL. So, and the error is uh, that uh, uh, you're not allowed to do that because you have a secondary engine. So DDLs on a table with a secondary engine defined are not uh, allowed. And here you can see uh, that we wanted to truncate the, this table. What you need to do, you need to disable Heatwave for the time of the maintenance. So you do alter table and the table you want to change and you do secondary engine, it's null. Then uh, you can perform this uh, maintenance again and you do uh, what you wanted to do. And here in this case, I want to do uh, the index, uh, re-index uh, stuff. So I run Magento to do right and it was done. Uh, um, and when it's done, you can enable uh, Heatwave again for this one. So in Heatwave, you can gain a lot of um, speed, but as a DBA, you need to uh, take care uh, of it uh, too a bit, but not too much, right? So that was it uh, to be